Kuzu Sampo and welcome to my second presentation. The topic that I'm going to present today is about the liquefaction of the gases. In my presentation, I'll be basically talking about the basic concept of liquefaction of the gases. Principle of liquefaction of the gases. I will look into the methods of liquefaction of the gases and its application. And I have also given here the references, wavelength, and the name of a books that I have read for coming up this uh, this presentation, and which you can also browse it for for uh, further details. Start off with my presentation. As we all know that when you increase the pressure, when you increase pressure, there is always decrease in volume. So when you increase pressure, the volume decreases. When volume decreases, what happens is the gas particles or the molecules which are there will come closer and closer. And at one time, it will be able to convert its state of matter from, in this case, from gas to liquid. And this uh, concept is being clearly supported by Boyle's law. Similarly, uh, there is effect of temperature in these cases too. So what happened here is when you decrease temperature, you are going to lower kinetic energy, lower the supply of energy to the molecules. As a result, at one point, or you will, we will see that the gas particles will come together and then convert themselves from gas to liquid. So looking at these two points, we can also say that either at very high pressure or at very low temperature, the, or if we use both of them together then we uh, effectively then we will be able to convert gas into liquid state. In 1869, Thomas Andrews conducted an experiment on carbon dioxide to basically understand the relationship about pressure, temperature and volume. And he conducted this on the carbon dioxide in both gases as well as liquid state conducted this experiment numerous of time and then plotted this, his finding in a form of a graph uh, which we will see here. Uh, the graph is basically is against uh, volume and the pressure and then here you will see we are changing temperature. These lines are called isotherms. So isotherms are basically lines which connect the points at a particular temperature. So his in his experiment he conducted this experiment in the various temperature so many times in the various temperature at different temperature and then he came up with final findings so let's look into his findings at 48.1 degree celsius he saw that there is a division of a, a gas but he saw that even he, when he increased the pressure there is no formation of liquid so therefore, this parabola line will follow a Boyle's law and will act as an ideal gas, ideal gas, where there is no conversion of gas to a liquid form. As he decreases the temperature, as he decreases the temperature, he saw this line are being deviated and shows uh, deviate from the, uh, from the ideal gas uh, behavior. So at around 30.98 degrees degree Celsius, uh, he noticed that at one point, liquid starts appearing. So this temperature, that is 30.98, is called as a critical temperature where the liquid starts forming. At this particular temp, uh, when as the liquid starts forming, at a particular pressure, that is, if you look at this graph, it is 73 atmospheric pressure. So this 73 atmospheric pressure is called as a critical pressure at a certain volume, which will be called as a critical volume. So from here, if we increase the pressure, there is still no uh, compressing of liquid because the liquid is now incompressible. Then as you keep on decreasing the temperature at around 21.5 degrees Celsius, we will see that gas carbon dioxide start forming liquid from point B to point C. In this, gases are being completely liquefied and at this point the pressure here is around 60 atmospheric pressure and then it continues to be in a liquid form even if you increase the pressure. 
Similarly, further when you decrease the temperature at around 13.1 degrees Celsius, you will see that gas carbon dioxide will start forming liquid from point I till point J. And here the formation of liquid is completed at 13.1 degrees Celsius at around 50 atmospheric pressure. Thus, we can say that gas can be liquefied at very low temperature, that is, which we can see here as a 13.1 degrees Celsius. And in this, we have a very low pressure, that is, 50 atmospheric pressure. Now, coming to the phases state of matter in this case, if you look at to the right of the critical temperature that is 30.98 where liquid start forming. So to the right of this critical temperature and to the right of this dome shape is basically the gas form in the gases phase which is a single phase. Next to the left of this uh, 30.98 temperature or this isotherm or to the left of this dome shape is basically a liquid phase and it's also a single phase in this dome phase like inside the region of this dome phase or this dome is basically formed from the point where uh, the uh, liquid start forming until where it has been formed completely so here you will see in this region both gas as well as liquid is been seen. So this phase is also called as two phase region. And in this case, what we will see is both liquid as well as gas are in the equilibrium state. So here you will see a table of the critical constant of some substances which I have just browsed through internet. So you can go uh, uh, have a glance on it. Now, regarding the principle of liquefaction of gas. The principle of liquefaction of a gas is basically named as joule thomson effect. So here, uh, scientists called James Prescott uh, Joule and William Thomson did this, come up with this uh, principle in around 1852. It's a basically follow-up work of what has been done by Joule on Joule expansion, where a uh, gas will undergo free expansion in the vacuum and temperature is unchanged here uh, if the gas is bas basically an idle. So this joule thomson effect is basically on the cooling of a gas. So this principle basically cites that or states that when the highly compressed gas is suddenly allowed to expand, then it will start cooling down. So further, to explain this uh, principle, we'll look into the liquefaction method. Uh, there are around three methods that I'm going to explain here. And in these three methods, you will clearly see that how dual Thomson effect is being used. The first method that we are going to see is Faraday's method. In a Faraday's method, what we will see is a, a L L-shaped tube is there. In this L-shaped tube, we, in the one end, we keep the reactant and then we are going to heat it. So when you're heating it, we are making it in a compressed method. So when it is in a compressed form, then what will happen here is these gases will try to expand. They, they will try to escape from here. And as they escape from here, when it comes to an area where they can expand, suddenly then they start cooling down. Therefore, we can have a liquid there. And basically, this Faraday's method can be done for the liquefaction of sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, and chlorine liquid or chlorine molecules. Next one is Linder's method. In this Linder's method, what will happen here is when we pass the air into a compressor chamber, and here we you will see that gas is being compressed at very high pressure, that is around 200 atmospheric pressure. And in this compressed chamber, the gas has been compressed and then allowed to pass through a tube, small tube, which has been connected with the refrigerating liquid. The function of this refrigerating liquid is to absorb the heat. And this, uh, this uh, compressed air is further allowed to pass through this spiral tube 
and then at the end of a spiral tube there is a small opening or nozzle or also we can call as a jet jet so from this small opening they are been suddenly allowed to expand in this expand expansion chamber where pressure is very low which is around one atmospheric pressure so when this highly compressed gas is allowed to expand here they will try to release the heat energy they have as a result they will try to cool down and this cycle continues till almost all the all the gas are in liquefied uh, this is the explanation of what i have just explained especially about the allowing the gas to expand as you can clearly see it says a highly compressed gas is suddenly released from small nozzle into expansion chamber having low pressure this gas molecule release their energies as a result it cools down similar to Linus method we have another one that is Claude's method now Claude's method and Linus method function in the similar manner but the difference that you will see is there is the air piston there is air piston in case of Claude's method so what does this air piston do and how does it function let me explain it once again so you as you pass the air into the compressed chamber the air are been compressed they are allowed to pass through a very small tube which is connected to refrigerating li a liquid and the function of re refrigerating refrigerating liquid is to absorb the heat and then this compressed air is still passed through a spiral tube and then allowed to expand from a small nozzle and then in the expansion chamber the pressure is very low and in this case you will see in the Claude's method you will see there is a air piston now what happened here is when gases are trying to expand they will push this air piston backward as they push air piston backward they are the gas are doing some mechanical work and when they does mechanical work they will start liquefying and we should know that uh, you should know that the Claude method and the Linder's method function similarly but Claude method is more effective than uh, Linder's method because here liquefaction of a gas is more faster as you can clearly see working function is similar to Linder's method except it consists of air piston added to it when air expands it pushes the piston back doing more mechanical work as a result more air liquefies compared to Linder's method so these are the three methods of liquefaction of uh, gases now we will move to the last section of the presentation that is about application of liquefaction of gases first application that I have brought here is the liquefied natural gas that is LNG and uh, liquefied petroleum gas LPG uh, this LNG and LPG basically we use it for our domestic purposes at our home or kitchen and then LNG we can also be uh, also use it for fueling of our vehicle uh, the next one is uh, from the liquefaction of a gases we can liquefy oxygen and hydrogen gas and then use this in a rocket engine as a rocket propellants uh, next one as you can clearly see the welding process is going on there so we can use liquefied liquid uh, gases like especially liquid oxygen and liquid acetylene for welding operations next one as a echo lung devices which we can basically use for dive uh, breathing which will help us in breathing in when we dive into the water bodies as you can clearly see here we can use liquefied oxygen uh, in this uh, echo lung device for helping us to breathe properly inside the water bodies next one it is not an LPG gas but it is the refrigerant so here liquefied uh, sulfur dioxide ammonia are being used as the refrigerant the function of refrigerant is basically they will exchange the heat from the device where it is been used basically these refrigerant uh, refrigerants are being used in our home uh, 
appliances like refrigerators and also in air conditioners. Uh, the last function uh, uh, application of liquefaction of gases is it is uh, more commonly used in a branch of physics called as a cryogenesis. So here the cryogenesis basically deals with the production and effect of extremely low temperature to the human bodies. Uh, with this, I come to end of my presentation. You will see some of the wavelength and books uh, that I have referred for coming up of this presentation, as well as which you can go through for further information. If you have any questions, suggestions, please feel free to drop here uh, for uh, more advanced and then also for better learning for myself. And then with this, I come to the end of my presentation. So I would like to thank each and every one of you for watching my video. And then also please do not forget to pass your comments on my presentation. And then lastly, since the uh, world is in a, a very tight situation of uh, COVID-19, so stay safe, wash your hands every day, and then please take care of yourself. With this, once again, thank you.